Hi, I'm Phil Taylor and I'm here to talk about my latest watercolour series, Red Beach. Uh, the inspiration for the series really came from me living in Red Beach for the last oh, 10 or 12 years at least. Just from really looking out my bedroom window or kitchen window and looking at the beach and the sea and the islands and the sky every day. I've been working on watercolours now for about three or four years. My background was in canvas oil paints, landscapes. I branched out into watercolours because I found the technical challenge of them quite simulating and I find them yeah, quite technically challenging. You've got less, less places to make mistakes with watercolours than you do with, uh, with oil paints. I've been doing a lot of research last year, the works of Jackson Pollock from the mid last century, American abstract painter, and I was very taken with his uh, technique of how he applied the paint to the horizontal canvases. So I've um, adapted the watercolours to uh, along the similar line. So all my paintings are now done horizontally. It's so actually a very, very freeing way of painting because you walk around the painting and apply it from different directions. Um, you yeah, just get a different perspective. Earlier in the year I was very, very lucky that uh, I had the opportunity to go to London and visited uh, the Tate Gallery there, the Modern Gallery, and saw uh, Mark Rothko's works, which were very powerful for me, just big blocks of solid colour, applied very, very thinly, but uh, they, they certainly had an impact on me and, and the type of compositions that I was thinking about at the time. The other um, artist I saw there as well was um, Agnes Martin, who was uh, at that same similar time frame was using grids in her work. So the end, that appealed to the engineer and builder and me, and so I incorporated those as well. So I'm trying to combine the three processes and three techniques together in this series and and try and push the envelope of what watercolours are all about. And I've got a lot of different techniques that I've developed to achieve the, the, the results that we have. This was one of the early ones in the series that I did, um, was just with the straight grid, and obviously, I, as you can see, I applied the colour very, very strongly in this situation, uh, the reds and the blues, and I found that quite uh, intense, actually. As I developed the uh, structure of the paintings or the compositions, I uh, lessened the amount of paint that I was putting on. Traditionally, watercolours have uh, a lot of white, that's also an important part of the composition. The other thing that I kind of worked out on the way through was each little sort of square or grid became its own individual painting and obviously you, you know, as you're painting them you end up with favourite parts of the painting that you want to protect and not, not overwork and quirky little things happen along the way so that was kind of a little bit of a bonus for me. Sort of reinforced, you know, I guess what Agnes Martin was doing 70 odd years ago with that technique as well. The main thing I've learned in this last year actually is that for the, for the first 58 years of my life I was trying to paint things that I saw, you know, make a representation of, of if that's an island, if that's a cloud, that's what it looks like. But really the combination of all of these influences this year is really, it's more about trying to paint what you know as opposed to what you see and of course then once you start doing that then the whole world opens up because you're talking about your memories, uh, your your stories, your your feelings, your emotions. So I've tried to incorporate some of that into, into these paintings as well. So they're very, very personal to me from that point of view.